The 6.5 is on the road with a view from Davos. We are here at the World Economic Forum having some incredible conversations. You know, it's one of the few places where you've got the intersection of tech, politics, regulation, sustainability, all wrapped into one. Daniel, it's been a good show so far. It has been. It is a morning and, and the Magic Mountain looks beautiful, but you know, you really can't get through a day here without just having some yeah. of the most inspirational and interesting conversations. But look, you know, AI, Pat, is of course, well, you know, every year there's a theme, right? There was years where it was sustainability, there's years where it's been diversity and inclusion. The, this year is really the year I think it's coming together. The last few years has been a lot about infrastructure and build up. This year, yeah, it's about seeing it in action, seeing AI work and driving enterprise and business and government value. Very true ROI. And one of the keys to this is, is obviously the inference, the processing of all that data. Yep. I can't imagine a better person to have a conversation with than CEO of Brock, uh, Jonathan Ross. Good so, to see you. Sorry, did someone say inference? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so we, uh, we're doing LPU chips. They're the fastest for inference, and we're going to ramp up quite a bit this year. Some of the numbers are unbelievable, but uh, we've been hitting them. Yeah. Well, it's incredible. I mean, you know, we saw you over the holidays uh, loading 747s uh, off to, you know, a, a far country. Super exciting, though. But I have to ask you, though, what, are you, what do you want to get out of this event? Is it a customer event for you? Or are you listening to officials? You know, is it is all the above? So it's meetings. We've been pretty heads down trying to deliver on what we had to deliver. And now I'm just bumping into people in the streets, in, like in the coffee line this morning, someone <laughs> recognized me. And these are people who we need to get back in touch with because we've been so focused on delivering for this customer. But yeah, we, we now measure our deliveries in 747s. <laughs> yeah, I think that's actually great. I mean, look, both Pat and I have been supporters of your journey from the very beginning. You know. We watch the pivot. We both are on your cap table. You know, full disclosure, we're invested yeah. and fully believe in what you're doing. But we've also seen a, a pretty substantial pivot. Remember in the beginning, you sort of had a chip that could do a, a few different things. And then at some point you kind of said, we think it's inference. You went to the LPU and then you kind of went to the cloud. You're like, look, if people aren't going to buy this and build it, we'll build it. We'll deploy it. And I mean, talk a little bit about some of these, you know, what you can. I know you can't share everything, but I mean, these 747s are going somewhere. Yeah. Customers are starting to consume this stuff. And I mean, you raised money recently. There must be there must be some evidence now that you can maybe share out there about how this is sort of evolving. Well, actually, one of the biggest ones, Langchain recently announced their top um, API users or whatever, or providers. And of course, OpenAI. Um, then a local thing, which isn't really an API, then Anthropic, then OpenAI again on Azure, and then Grok, and yes. then Google Gemini, and then Amazon Bedrock. So we're actually above those in terms of usage. What we've lacked is total amount of capacity for AI, and we've just added a whole bunch more. So we just delivered a whole bunch of 747s worth of our systems to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. That's our second region, but it's almost on the opposite side of the planet, which has brought our latency down almost no matter where you are. So now we're looking to deploy all over the world and build out a global inference network. But as for the, the pivot, um, we actually always wanted to, to sort of build this and make it easy for people to use from an API point of view and, and cloud. We never thought we would be able to get the capital to start doing this ourselves, and so we started selling systems. But we found it was just easier to get people using us when we provide an API. So we launched in March, and we're now at over 800,000 developers. Wow. Now that, that is a staggering uh, number, and every time I do a double take, every one of the emails I get from you guys, or you know, you or Sonny is kind of flaunting it uh, on there. I mean, congratulations there. I, you know, one of the questions I get a lot that it's funny. I do think I know the answer to this, but I think our, our viewers need to hear is is architecturally. I mean, this you know, everybody's like Nvidia, 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 Nvidia. Training, training, training. What is it about the Grok chip and services that makes it special? Just just for the layperson. Well, for the layperson, I'll give it a shot, a little complicated, <laughs> but um, all right. So think of it this way. Everyone's heard of Moore's Law. And so the number of transistors doubles roughly every 18 to 24 months. And what we realized was that AI was actually getting better faster than exponential. But if you look at the amount of data being created, it wasn't exponential. Yeah. The algorithms, they were improving, but it was big jumps. It wasn't this sort of exponential growth. So where was this double exponential coming from? And what we realized when we started Grok was that the number of chips was also doubling every 18 to 24 months. So if you're going to get an advantage, why focus at the chip level? Why not focus at the data center level? So what we did that's very different than GPUs, GPUs have a lot of external memory. 
and they will do part of the problem, bring stuff in from memory, and then do part of the problem and bring stuff in from memory. It's very right. slow, very energy intensive. So we use about a third of the energy versus a GPU, because what we do is we'll take hundreds or thousands of our chips, lay the problem out completely in those chips so we don't touch any external memory. And it's like an assembly line. We'll just go through that very quickly. So we take advantage of that double exponential and we're the first to do this. And I know we only have a, a minute with you, Jonathan. And by the way, thank you so much for taking the time. Now, I do, I do want to point out for everybody out there, you've been doing this on 14 nanometer. Yeah. Which for, you know, you don't have to, I mean, you got to be a little technical to understand what that actually means, but there's a lot of opportunity to improve. You've been at these incredible speeds on like 14 nanometer, and you could go to four, three, two, and start to even get more processing power, transistor density. It's pretty, it's pretty exciting stuff. So as you kind of finish up, you know, your first journey to Davos, I know, um, you know, what is sort of the one thing you want people to be thinking about Grok as we head into Grokking the full, about Grok. what do you, well, let, me, you let me give you, let me give you two. So it. I'll give you two for the price of one. Two. So yeah. the, the first one is going to the 14 nanometer. Um, to give a sense of that, most of you will have heard of what an, uh, a Blackwell is or an H100. Blackwell is four nanometer. Then you get the H100, which is older. Yeah. Then you have, um, I think it was the Volta, and then you have the Pascal. Now you're at like something, somewhere around like 12 nanometer. We're 14 nanometer and we're running circles around these four nanometer chips. Rumors are we may have taped out a four nanometer chip that may be coming soon. I'm not gonna confirm or deny. So that's one. Okay. Number two, the amount of capacity. Because we're not capacity constrained, because we're not um, using HBM, we're gonna ramp and build an enormous number of chips this year. So our intention is to get close to two million this year. If we do that, keep in mind that NVIDIA is trying to do two to three million this year. Next year, we plan to do a lot more. That's incredible, and yeah. makes me really proud to just sit there, and let the let the let the shares appreciate Jonathan. I think, uh, you know, I'm glad that we bought early and believed early. I continue to believe. I'm really glad we had the chance to sit here in Davos. I know we've done it in other parts of the country in the U.S. It's been just been great to watch your explosive growth. The mentions on All In, we're all fans here. Pat and I actually were one of the, we went to the original, original. All In Summit. Yeah, we actually really? did it the first yeah. year. Yeah, those guys are great. They're super interesting. I love how the, the kind of truth telling, you know, and that they just say it straight. I know you're a guy that always likes to say it straight. So have a great Davos. Thanks for joining us and let's talk again soon. Thanks. All right. And thank you everybody for tuning in. Stay part of our 6.5 on the road of view from Davos. So many great conversations here. This is a great way to start day number two. Hit subscribe. We'll talk to you all later. Bye bye.